Hi guys, Courtney here, 60 Minute Gentle Flow. Um, I posted about an hour ago. If you are going to be doing this live with me, I recommend grabbing a blanket or a pillow, a couple of blocks um, or a couple of books for underneath the hands, maybe two water bottles or something that you can uh, rest your hands on. And then make sure that your mat is set up against the wall. You can see that mine is pushed up against the wall in my apartment here. Um, we're going to be utilizing the wall a lot as we move into our balancing poses today. Um, if you don't want to use the wall, it's okay, um, but I just want to show you some different variations of some of those balancing poses utilizing something that you have at your house. So I'll give everyone a couple of moments to hop on and get uh, get ready to flow. And um, I'm going to step back to my mat while I wait for everyone. So. Tonight, if you follow, is April's full moon, and it's going to be the biggest full moon of the entire year. Um, the full moon for April is in Libra, and Libra's sign is the scale, which we think about when we're thinking about equality or balancing. Um, which is why I created a sequence today around some balancing. Um, yeah, so whenever you're ready to get situated, we're going to start seated up against the wall. I'm going to move my phone just a little bit so you can see me better placed on my wall, but go ahead and grab your blanket or your pillow for underneath your seat if you need it. And then come to your wall at the back of the mat. We're going to draw our hips, our low back all the way up against the wall. We'll start with crisscross applesauce in the legs, or if it feels better for you, you can extend the legs straight out in front of you. But I really want you to try to press the entirety of your spine back. Even the back of the skull should be resting on the wall. Your hands can rest lightly on your upper thighs. Flip the palms down for grounding or flip them up if you need a little bit more energy today. I'm gonna keep mine flipping up. The rain kind of makes me feel a little tired, so. I'm gonna try to vibe off you guys and soak up some of your energy. Now, keeping this length in the spine. So, every part of your spine is pressing against the wall. Like I said, even the head, your neck obviously will not touch, but everything else is flush up against the wall. Keep that length, close the eyes or soften the gaze. Take a couple moments to just settle your breath. Allow your body to arrive to your mat. Soften the gaze or close the eyes when you're ready. Hold the mouth, exhale your air. We'll take three grounding breaths together. Slow, low inhale through your nose. Hold the mouth side that out. Two more. Feel your shoulder blades slide down your back towards the hips. Keep trying to pull your belly button towards your spine. While keeping this length, see if you can try to stay soft in your face, in your jaw, the brow. And we'll start to settle into the breath. The largest full moon of the entire year, I believe is at 1034 this evening. The sun will be directly opposite of the moon. The moon representing the divine feminine and the sun representing the bold masculine. Finding that equality, the balance of both. And just one more round of breath. 
everything go. Open your mouth, exhale. Ha. Take your time. You can pause the video if you need to. If you're ready, start to blink the eyes open. Noticing the wall supporting your spine here. Now, if your legs are bent, go ahead and release the palms to your sides and lengthen the legs in front of you. Kneecaps point up towards the sky. We'll gently start to flex the toes towards our face and then point them towards the front of your mat. We'll do that a couple more times. Nothing fancy, just start to move and wake up your legs. with your toes flex. Keep your spine pressing against the wall behind you. If you'd like to come off your pillow or your blanket, please feel free to do so. We're going to straddle the legs, bringing them out to the side. They don't have to come very wide. Let me get my blocks out of the way. But keep your toes flexing up. We'll reach the arms up towards the ceiling, the sky, the moon. Take a breath in, reach up, lengthen through the side bodies. And then the exhale, we're going to peel the spine away from the wall, hinging from the hips. Flip the palms forward, getting an inner thigh stretch. Release the palms down towards your mat. Now we're just starting to wake up the legs and warm up. So if you need a moment, maybe just stay right here. As you breathe out, if you'd like to deepen, we'll start to walk the hands a little bit closer towards the front of our space. Try to keep sending your tailbone back towards the wall behind you. Again, letting your face, your shoulders be soft. But your legs are active, flexing through your toes, protecting the knee. Allow the kneecap to point straight up towards the sky. So if the knees start to dip in, rotate your inner thigh towards the sky a little bit more. And you can shorten the stance of the legs. They don't have to be very wide here. We'll hold this stretch for two more rounds of breath. Remember the exhale will help you deepen as you walk the hands forward and your inhale will help you come out if you feel like you are stretching a little bit too far. One more time, breath in. And stay and breathe out. Keep your legs active, flexing the toes. We'll start to walk the hands back towards midline of our body. Now we'll bend the left knee and release the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. If you need to scoot your hips a little bit more forward so that they're coming off of the blanket or the pillow, feel free. It's okay to have your spine away from the wall. We'll reach the arms up over our head. On the exhale, your right arm will come inside of the right thigh and we're going to get a side body stretch, reaching your left fingertips towards your right toes. Lightly lift the chin off of the chest, and if you'd like to lift the gaze underneath the armpit, please feel free. Think about stretching from your left fingertips all the way down to the left hip, but keep that left hip rooted down into your pillow, your blanket, or the ground. Now we're going to pivot our torso over our extended leg. Take one more breath here. On the exhale, release your top hand down. Your back arm will come to frame the foot, rotating your torso over the thigh towards your toes. On the exhale, begin to hinge and fold forward, getting a nice stretch through the hamstring. Please try to keep the toes flexed here towards your face. We'll hold it for two more rounds of breath. Easy on the end, as much as you can in your compression. And easy on the out. Pressing the hands down, beginning to walk the palms back towards your hips. We'll rotate our torso to point forward and just switch out the legs. Opposite leg extends long, flex the toes. Bend the right knee, sole of foot comes in towards your thigh. Reach the arms up over your head. And as you exhale, arm comes to the inside of the thigh. We'll keep reaching the right fingertips towards the left toes. So you should feel the stretch in the psoas and the intercostal muscles. 
Try to rotate or peel that right shoulder open and behind you. Maybe you start to gaze up underneath the armpit if that feels okay. Think about a long stretch from your right fingertips now down to your right hip. So try to root that hip down. Breathe in to come out if you feel like you're stretching a little bit too far. And breathe out to deepen if you want a little bit more. Two more rounds of breath and then we'll rotate our torso over our extended leg. One more inhale. And as you exhale, release the top arm down. Both palms will frame your leg. Start to rotate the rib cage over towards your kneecap. And then as you exhale, begin to fold forward over your extended leg, feeling a stretch through your ankle with the flexed toes, the calf, and the hamstring. One more round of breath, easy in. Open the outside of that out. All right, my friends, slowly begin to rise, walking hands back towards your hips. We'll rotate our torso towards the front of our space. We'll just cross our legs and roll over the shins. Go ahead and walk your body up to the center of the mat so you're away from the wall, setting up a tabletop. If you wanna grab your pillow or your blanket with you for extra padding underneath the knees, go ahead and grab that now and set it in place. Your shoulders will come over the wrists, your hips will come over the knees. Now option whatever feels best on your kneecaps, you guys. You can curl your toes if that feels better or you can keep your toes pressing down. If your toenails are pressing into the earth, I like to press down into my shins and that will help take some pressure off your kneecap. We're gonna walk our body for our hands forward rather coming into a puppy pose. So try to keep this 90 degree angle in the legs. Just start to walk the hands forward. You can utilize that block if you have it or a book for underneath the forehead. Now think of your belly drawing up and in and your rib cage back. So we're not creating a back bend here. We're keeping our spine nice and long. If you wanna deepen, you'll reach the hands closer towards the front of the mat and maybe release your forehead down to the earth. Let your chest hang heavy through the shoulders. Remember, keep the hips directly over the knees. One more round of breath in your puppy pose. Exhale your air. Press into the palms, begin to lift the chest. We'll walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, setting up our neutral tabletop. Now I'm gonna turn to the side so you can check out my alignment here. We're gonna move into a bird dog, being really mindful of the ribs. It feels really good to let the ribs flay open. But here we want to keep drawing the front ribs towards the back ribs. And you see as I did that, I've got a little tilt of my tailbone. Hold that. We'll extend the left leg behind us. You can point or flex the toes. And then begin to reach the right arm forward with your thumb pointed up. A little bit of stability muscle working here. Finding your balance. Take a breath in, reach and press. And on the exhale, we'll round it, bird dog, elbow towards the knee, try to pull your ribs even closer towards the ceiling and tuck your chin to your chest. One more time, inhale, reach up. Flex or point your toes, doesn't matter which one. Get a little bit longer, feel that opposing energy. And on the exhale, we'll round. Extend everything long. We'll release the right hand down, but keep your left foot lengthened. Go ahead and flex the toes if you haven't already and release the ball mound of the toes down. Pull that belly up and in, reset, and if the ribs close. And then as you exhale, we're gonna stretch the back of the leg a little bit more. Imagine that you're pressing your heel into the wall behind you. You're stretching your ankle, your calf. Belly stays pulled in. You can always drop down to the forearms or utilize your blocks or books underneath the palms to take a little pressure off the wrists. Hold it here for one more breath in. 
and stay for the breath out. All right, we're gonna hinge it forward. Start to float those toes again, and then release the knee to meet the right. Take a moment here, maybe sway the hips from side to side. I'll give you that cat cow in a moment. Feel free to take one now if you'd like to. And we'll meet together in our neutral tabletop. Belly draws up and in. Extend the right leg behind you and the left arm forward. Try to pull the bicep up so it's next to the ear. So think about pulling your arm uh, just outside of your peripheral vision. Start to reach the left fingertips forward and press your right heel back. Really feel that length that you're creating in the body. Pulling the belly up and in, breathe in. Breath out, bird dog, elbow towards your knee, press into your right palm. Just one more time, inhale for length. And exhale, round it in. Beautiful, everything gets long, stretch. Release the left hand down, but keep your right foot extended behind you. We'll drop that foot to the earth. And then as you breathe out, Press your heel back as if you're trying to punch a hole in that wall that's behind you. Feel that nice stretch through the back line of the leg. Even here, your belly stays engaged. Ribs are closed. Breathe in. Maybe press the heel even closer towards the back wall. Breathe out. Hinge forward, shoulders come over the wrists. Begin to hover the back leg and then release the knee down. We'll take it into a child's pose, my friends. Draw the big toes together to touch and take the knees all the way out to the long edges of the mat, maybe a little wider. Sit your hips back towards the heels and then begin to extend the arms forward. Again, forehead can rest on block, on a fist, on a blanket if it's not underneath the knees or it can rest all the way down on the earth. Two more rounds of breath. Exhale all of your air. Press into the palms. Begin to lift the chest, lift the hips. Keep me back in neutral tabletop. We're going to add just a little bit more fire to prepare for our balancing poses. Knees come underneath the hips. Neutral tabletop, belly is drawing in. Right leg extends behind you just as you did before. Let the toes press down. You're gonna take the left shin out to a 45 degree angle and we're gonna rotate, keep the sole of foot pressing down for now into a modified side plank. So the right hand will reach up towards the sky. Your ribs are pulling back and your pelvis is pressing slightly forward. Left shoulders directly over the wrists. Keep reaching up through the right hand. Maybe the gaze follows. Now option, if you're feeling a little out of balance with the energies of the full moon, just stay right here. But if you wanna experience a little bit more, maybe start to play with floating the right toes off the ground. Flexing the toes towards the face. Engaging through the glutes as you press your heel back. Again, another great place to stay, or maybe you get a quad stretch. We'll move into a candy cane variation. Bend the knee and reach back, grabbing for the top of the foot or the inner arch. Press the pelvis, the hips forward, and try to use your hand to pull your heel closer toward your glute. And see if you can stretch through the front of the right thigh a little bit more. Whatever gaze feels best on the neck, it can be up towards the sky, it can be straight forward, or you can even look down if that feels best. We're here for two more rounds of breath. Exhale all your air out. Gently release the hand, avoid slingshotting the foot. Everything reaches forward or back, lengthening first. Then we'll rotate, release your palm. Walk the left toes back in line with the knee, and then the right knee will come down to the earth. Let's take a moment, walk the hands back towards the knees. We'll stretch those wrists for a minute before we get into the second side. I know we've kind of been on those a lot. 
Interlace the fingers. I like to kind of just roll the wrist around if that feels good. Anything else you need, feel free to take it. I'll guide you through one more stretch. Releasing the hands, press your palms forward with your fingertips pointed up. You'll take the right hand to the left fingers and pull back so that you're stretching the wrist. Maybe you feel that a little bit in the forearm. And when you feel ready to switch it out, you guys go ahead and shake that out we've got one more side for our modified side plank go ahead and meet me in your tabletop this time the right shin will come out to a 45 degree angle and the left leg will extend behind you sole of foot presses down we'll start with the sole of foot rooted into the earth find your grounding first begin to rotate open into your side plank left hand reaches high belly draws in hips are slightly forward right shoulder over the wrist press into your fingertips Maybe you stay here. Maybe you play with floating your leg. If you do so, flex your toes. Maybe this is where you'd like to stay on this side or you can bend the knee. Reach for the top of the foot or the inner arch. Press your hips forward and try to use your hand to pull your heel closer towards your bum. Gaze anywhere that feels good on the neck. It can be up forward or down. One more round of breath, guys. Breathe in. Gently exhale, feeling that opposing energy, feminine and masculine, as you reach and lengthen, dainty arm forward, and strong heel presses back. Breathe in. Exhale, release the palms, square the hips, release the knee, meet me back in neutral table. Here's that cat cow I promised you. We'll start with our cat tucking chin to chest, hollowing out your belly, pressing into the palms. Tuck the tailbone down towards your knees. And then on the inhale, rib cage blades open, tailbone up towards the sky. Maybe the gaze follows. Two more rounds with your breath. Exhale, cat. Exaggerate that doming in your spine. Really try to hug the belly up. And inhale, cow. One more time. All right, you guys, meet me in a neutral tabletop. Now, option here, you can come into a second round of puppy or you can take a downward facing dog. We will rise to our feet in a moment, so just know that if you're going into puppy pose, you might have a few extra steps to get standing. I'm going to move into down dog, belly draws in, curl your toes, pipe the hips. Now, take a couple moments here in your dog, you guys, just notice the back line of the legs. Maybe you pedal them out, softening one heel at a time down to the earth. Maybe you keep that soft bend in the knees, especially if those hamstrings are feeling really tight. Accommodate for your body. Each day we arrive to our mat, it's a little bit different. Embracing the change. Two more rounds of breath and then find a little bit of stillness. All right, you guys, we're going to walk our hands back towards our toes to come into our forward fold. So we're a little bit closer to that wall behind you. No worries about walking up to the wall just yet. I'll meet you in a ragdoll. You can toe heel the feet as wide as feels good. Interlacing opposite hand to opposite elbow and just let your head hang heavy and down. Maybe you start to play with the balance, shifting the weight forward and back, filling out the four corners of the feet. You can shake your head yes, nod the head no, or just take a couple of sways from side to side. When you feel ready, release the hands down. Now, if your feet are not wide, please go ahead and lengthen them out to shoulder width distance apart or even a little wider is okay. 
Keep a little bit of a bend to the knees and slowly begin to rise to standing with a wide stance. When you arrive, shoulders pull up and down and then take that forward. Reaching both arms up over our head, let the palms connect. It's okay to have a little bit of a bend in the elbow. So we're just gonna take a wide leg lateral flexion, getting into the side bodies. On the inhale, think about pressing your fingertips up and lengthening through the spine. And then on the exhale, we'll take it over to the right, pressing the hips to the left. So again, feeling that nice juicy stretch in the side of your body. Keep the chin lifted off the chest rather than tucking it in. And we'll only go as far, only go as deep as you can stay connected to your core. Meaning if the ribs start to splay open and your booty starts to pop back, you're going a little bit too far, just lift up slightly. On the inhale, come back through center. Soften through the shoulders, through the face, take a breath and reach up. And on the exhale, we'll take that in the opposite direction. Chin off chest, maybe gaze comes up. Your shoulders and your hips are level and pointed directly to the top of your space. Big breath in. And stay, breathe out. Slowly begin to rise. Go ahead and release the hands down to the hips. We're gonna come to the wall again. Shorten your stance before you move. And then we're gonna step back. So we're gonna take a pyramid pose on the wall. So I like the right heel to press into the wall. Your foot will be at a 45 degree angle, so only the heel is pressing in. Keeping the hands on the hips so you can feel your pelvis as you start to move, and we'll just begin to step the left foot forward. So your stance might be a little bit shorter because you're on the wall, that's okay. Now try to press into both of your feet equally, right? So we're pressing into the tripod, the big toe ball mount, the pinky toe ball mount, and the heel. And then notice what's going on with the hips. So if you have a really long stance and you notice that your hips are starting to rotate open, I want you to think about using your hands to close the hips off and you might have to shorten the stance a little bit so that you can find that alignment. Now keeping the hands on the hip bone, so you've got your peace fingers touching the bone of the hip and your thumbs kind of wrapped around towards the back, we're gonna hinge from that space. So imagine that your hands are moving your upper body. So we're coming into a pyramid stretch through the hamstring. A little bit of a bend through the knees. That's gonna protect the joints here. And then think about your spine pressing against the wall just as we started. So the belly's drawing in, the ribs are closed and pulling back, and then you're pressing your tailbone towards the wall and reaching the head forward. Well, maybe we find a little bird dog action here if you want to activate through your core a little bit more. Your right arm will swing forward, thumb points up, and your left arm will reach back, thumb point down. Just an option. If you're not feeling very grounded today, I recommend keeping your hands on your hips. The full moon can bring some wild energy, so just notice how you're feeling, and if you'd rather take hands to hips, please feel free. One more breath in and we'll stay and hold that for the breath out. If your arms are flying, bring them back to your hips, please. And slowly begin to rise. So we're gonna pivot to the side, continuing to use the wall for a triangle pose. So now I'd like you to press the blade edge of the right foot into the wall. So scoot yourself back. And then your left leg will extend forward. No bend in the knee, maybe just a micro bend. You're going to straighten the front knee. Now you can utilize your hands on the wall to find this hinge or you can keep the hands on the hips, whatever feels best to you. We're going to start to hinge and reach the crown of the head forward. So think about the side plank variation that we did here. You want to slightly tuck that left hip underneath you and use your abdomen rather than the pelvis to rotate the chest up towards the sky. If your hand is still pressing on the wall, eventually you'll hinge deep enough that it no longer does. Maybe you start to reach that hand up towards the sky. You can keep the bottom hand on the hip or reach it down. If you have a block or a book and you'd like to use it, that hand can rest on top of your prop. Gaze can be up forward or down. I'll try to spin the chest open just a little bit more by pressing the back of your palm towards the wall behind you. And keep that little tuck of your hip. One more breath in. 
can stay for the breath out. Nice. Now the top hand's going to come back to our hip. Fingertips are resting on the hip bone. Little to no weight in your bottom hand. So you're using the oblique to slowly begin to rise. We'll extend that left arm out. And then now we'll start to bend into the front knee, taking our warrior two on the wall. Same thing, your back hand can stay on the hip or it can press into the wall. Try to keep the shoulders over the hip. So if you press too much and you notice that your body's hinging forward, keep a soft bend in the back elbow. Now from here, you can keep the hand pressing into the wall or release it down to the back leg. We'll reverse our warrior, reaching the left fingertips towards the back wall. Pressing the blade edge of your foot into the wall, but you're still keeping equal weight in that front foot. Belly's drawing in, stretching through the side of the body. I'll slowly begin to rise. We're going to stay on the wall. I'd like you to straighten the front leg again. Rotate your foot so it's parallel to the shortage of the mat. All 10 toes are going to point forward. I'm going to scoot back just a little bit so you guys can see me. And we're going to move into a prasarita. I like my hands on hips here. You can keep one hand on the wall if you'd like to. We're using that wall for our stability today, finding the equilibrium, hinging from hips. Belly's pulling in. You can stay right here, activating your core, or start to release the hands down. If you have props, your props can come underneath the palms, underneath the head. If you do not have props, just reaching the hands down to your mat, your calves, your thighs, or keep them on the hips. Start to slightly shift the weight forward into the balls of the feet. So you want to keep your hip over your ankle. Notice that the booty is pressing back. We're putting a lot of strain on the leg. Just hinge forward. Crown of head is hanging down. Breathing into the stretch into the hamstrings for a couple more rounds of breath. Micro bend through that knee, maybe so small that I can't even tell that it's there. That will help you keep length through your spine. All right, you guys, one more time, breathe in. Deep in the stretch if it feels okay, breathe out. All right, we'll move slow to rise. Palms come back underneath the shoulders or to your props. Coming to a wide leg half lift. Now use the strength of your core. We're gonna take our hands to our hips. Pressing the blade edge of the feet away from one another as we slowly begin to rise, we're tucking the hips underneath us. We'll shorten our stance, taking the foot away from the wall now. And when you're ready, come back to facing the front. Keeping the hands on the hips, we'll take our pyramid pose opposite side. So your left foot is going to press back, so the heel is pressing into the wall. Keeping the hands on the hips so you can notice if you're making this an open hip pose or a closed hip pose, we want to make it a closed hip pose, meaning your hips are pointed straight forward. Begin to lengthen your stance by stepping the right foot forward. If you need to come off of the wall just a little bit and then reset, please feel free to do so. Micro bend through the front knee. Doesn't have to be totally straight. We don't want that leg locked out necessarily. And then keeping the hands on your hips, we're gonna hinge forward. So act as if you're using your hands to actually find that tilt of the pelvis as you begin to reach the chest towards the top of your mat. You should feel a nice stretch here through the back of the leg. If it's in your practice to deepen, please feel free to do so. Thinking of your spine pressing up against the wall just as we started. Belly's pulling in, right hip pressing back, left hip slightly forward. One more time, breathe in. And stay for the breath out. Pressing into both of your feet equally, we slowly begin to rise. We're gonna take it into our triangle pose on the wall, so we'll spin our back foot parallel to the shortage of the mat, and then walk the blade edge of the foot up towards the wall. You can lengthen your stance a little bit if you need to, just toe heel the feet towards the front of your space, or the foot rather. 
Start to straighten the front leg, not all the way, keeping that micro bend. You can utilize your hand on the back wall to help you. Right arm extends forward, start to hinge. Think of the alignment in your torso of the side plank. You can stay here. You can take the left hand to the hip and hold it there. You can start to reach the right hand down. Eventually, maybe you play around with lifting the left hand up. So notice the stability that the wall gives you as you start to move into some of these poses. Maybe you can explore with deepening the stretch. Maybe you can explore with finding a little bit more strength, really tapping into your obliques here, rotating the chest up, using your core, not your hips, to guide that movement. Hug your inner thighs towards one another. Hold for one more breath in. And stay for the breath out. Top hand comes to hip. Slowly begin to use your core to rise. Tee off the front arm. You can keep the hand on hip or reach it towards the wall. We're coming into a warrior two. Keeping knee directly over the ankle. So tendency here on the wall is to let that knee pop forward. Lengthen the stance a little bit if you need to. So take your time to set yourself up. You can pause the video. And then we'll take it reverse. Reaching the right fingertips towards the wall. Maybe your hand releases from wall and slide down your thigh. Draw your belly in. Rotate the right knee towards the right pinky toe. Equal weight in both of your feet. All right, you guys, we slowly begin to rise. Both hands come to hips. Straighten the front knee, and we're going to rotate that foot parallel to the shortage of the mat. Again, I'm going to scoot back a little bit, but you can stay right where you're at. Keeping hands to hips. Blade edge of the back foot is still pressing into the wall. We'll hinge it forward. Keeping the weight of the balls of the feet. Think of your long spine pressing against the wall. You can utilize core strength here by releasing the, or keeping the hands on the hips. Or to deepen the stretch, you can release the hands down. Your props are there to help support you. If you need them, go ahead and grab them underneath the palms. Maybe play around with lengthening the head so you're releasing through the neck and slightly shift the weight forward into the balls of the feet. All right, you guys, just two more rounds of breath. When you feel ready, hands come underneath the shoulders. Activate through your core, bringing your hands to your hips. Micro bending through the knees will slowly begin to rise. Shorten your stance. Now taking the foot away from the wall. And then we'll face forward. Step into the center of the mat. Give yourself some space away from the wall. We'll get back to that in a moment. For now, reach the hands up over your head. Mountain pose. And let's take a little back bend. We'll release our hands to the low back. Your fingertips pointed down. Hug your elbows in towards one another. Start to lift the gaze. And as you exhale, keeping your glutes engaged, we're going to press the hips forward. Think about pressing your chest up towards the sky. And then draw the gaze back. Hug the elbows in. Slight tuck of the chin. Avoid just throwing the head back here. One more breath in. And stay. Breathe out. Squeeze your elbows. Slowly begin to rise. Hands come up over your head. Let your palms connect. Hinge from your hips. Forward fold release. All right, you guys. Planting the palms down, we're going to come back into our tabletop. And we're going to come into a plank pose. So core strength is really important as we start to move into our balancing poses. That masculine energy, we're looking for that here. So take a couple of rounds of breath if you need it. 
You can stay right here in your table. You can move into an embryo or a child's pose. Pause the video if you want to grab some water. I'm gonna move right into our plank. So if you're coming with me, keep the shoulders over the hips. Fingers are spread wide and press into the fingertips. And then one leg at a time, make sure that you're far enough away from the wall that you've got space here. We'll extend the legs behind us and come into our plank pose. So again, I'm gonna come to the side, you guys, so that you can see me. Shoulders are over your wrists and keep them there. Your legs are engaged, so the hamstrings are pressing up towards the sky. Heels are over the toes and then press down into the hand so you feel that little lift of the chest. So you guys avoid allowing the chest to hang down and you're getting kind of a scapular push up here. We wanna stay engaged through the upper back by sending it towards the ceiling. Holding here for four. Hold for three. Hold for two. Last one. Option to drop down to the knee and take your modified side plank. We're rolling over onto the left hand. Right hand reaches up towards the sky. Pipe the hips, draw the belly in, and then start to reach your bicep next to the ear. Again, feeling that stretch through the side body. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you play with floating your top leg. Flex your toes. Breath in. Exhale, release high plank. Come down to the knees. Send the hips back embryo pose. This time in your embryo, flip your palms up towards the sky. Feel some release through the back. With your knees together. If you'd rather take a child's pose with the knees wide to get into the hips, please feel free. All right, you guys, you guessed it. Side plank, opposite side, palms face down, lift the hips, reset your body. I'm going to face this way now. One at a time, lengthen the legs behind you. So you're coming into your plank pose. Find a sturdy plank first. Take a couple moments to set yourself up. Remember, you can hold it on the knees or you can take your modified side plank with the shin out to the side. Right hand will be your foundation this time. When you're ready, roll onto the blade of the foot. Hand reaches up, belly draws back, and then bicep next to the ear, reach the fingertips forward. Maybe stay, play with hovering the top leg, flex your toes. Core is strong, breathe in. Exhale, release, high plank. Come on down to the knees. Take it into your child's or your embryo. Right, you guys nice work finding a little fire we're gonna play with finding our balance on the wall if you would like to grab your blocks I recommend taking them with you or your water bottle or book or whatever it is that you have handy we'll take those with us set them to the sides of your space for now you're going to face the wall and we're going to place our hands on the wall so your wrist should be in line with the shoulder. And then we're going to hinge, bringing our body into the shape of an L. All right, so you still want your hips over your ankles. Come onto the wall. Palms press into the wall with the wrists in line with the shoulders. And then start to walk the feet back a little bit if you need it. Come into the L shape on the wall. Belly's drawing in. Press the palms firmly into the wall. Feeling that strength through the shoulders as you press the hands. Avoid allowing the head to fall off, so keep your ears directly over the shoulders. And then we'll shift the weight into the left leg and start to play with lifting the right. Now with your hands on the wall, guys, you can notice what's going on with your hips. So try to avoid lifting and opening up your hips. We're keeping our hips closed here, rotating the pinky toe down, low belly pulls up and in. One more breath in. Exhale, release the right foot. Shift your weight there. Left foot begins to float. Rotating pinky toe down. 
keeping your core engaged. Breathe in. Exhale, release, breathe out. Slowly begin to rise, pressing your hands into the wall and face forward. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab those props. So same thing here, we're gonna create an L shape, but this time the foot is going to press into the wall. So go ahead and grab your props if you're using them. If you're not, your hands will rest on the ground. You'll have one of your feet pressed into the wall, so it's going to be a little bit more stable than you might be used to. So if you don't have those props for your palms, don't worry about it, it's totally fine. So we're gonna walk our body back. Blocks, water bottle, whatever you've got are coming underneath your hands. So the shoulders are over the wrists. And then we'll extend the right leg behind us. Now, if your knee is bent, you'll know that you need a little bit more space like I do, so walk forward. Then begin to extend the right leg so that your right foot is pressed into the wall. Take a couple moments to set yourself up so you find the right alignment. And then once you have it, we're gonna create a little bit more activation through the legs. So think about someone's pressing into your quad and sending the hamstring up. So you're rotating the hamstring up towards the sky, and at the same time, you're pressing your foot firmly into the wall. So you should feel some fire in your lifted leg. And then your bottom leg, same thing. You're gonna act as if you're pressing that foot firmly down like it's, it's held by cement here. Finding that strength in the foundation, pressing the palms down into your prop or into the earth. Keep your core engaged. One more breath here. And then the exhale, micro bend the knees and just lightly release the right foot down. Take a moment if you need it, sway the hips from side to side. And then we'll just switch out the legs. So stay in the forward fold on the blocks. The left leg will extend behind you, pressing into the wall. Notice the hips, they should be pointed straight down. Micro bend through your standing leg is totally fine. And then find that activation as if you're pressing your quad, your hamstring up towards the sky. At the same time, the left foot is pressing firmly into the wall, micro bending through the right knee, but activate pressing down just as much as you're pressing back. Chin stays off the chest. Keep your spine long and neutral. Breath in. And exhale, gently bend the knees and release. We'll take a rag doll here. Feet can come as wide as you need. Set your props to the side if you have them. This time we're gonna take a variation with chest expansion. Interlace the hands at the low back. Press the heel of the palm together and the knuckle mounds up towards the sky. Bend the knees as much as you need. Exhale your air, release the hands. Shorten your stance. Slowly begin to rise. Arms come up over your head. Release the hands to low back and take a little back bend. All right, you guys, we're in it. We'll take half moon once on the wall and then once on the mat. Bring your one block with you if you're going to use it. So we'll come up to the wall. For the first time, we're going to take our half moon with our uh, butt against the wall. And then the second time, we'll take it with the foot against the wall option then to release the foot. So take the block underneath the shoulder and then come to standing. So you want your right toes pointed towards the prop and the left toes pointed straight forward in front of you. We'll start to bend into the front leg, keep the left hand on the hip. We're gonna reach down for that prop and begin to extend the left leg as we start to reach. So again, you're finding that equilibrium as you are playing with your weight distribution and your balance. All right, so the right hand will rest down on your prop or on the earth. Start to press your shoulder. Remember, we're gonna twist from our core, our torso. You're twisting from your rib cage. Try to press your hips back against the wall. Maybe the left shoulder can press into the wall. You can stay here with hand on hip or begin to extend the arm up towards the sky. Flex these back toes towards your face. We're holding for three. Hold for two, 
hold for one. Hand comes back to hip, soften through the right knee, begin to lightly tap the left foot down. Nice job, you guys. So we'll switch that out. The block will come to the opposite side. Left toes will point forward towards your block. Right toes will point towards the front of your space. Right hand's going to come to hip. Extend the left arm in front of you. Start to bend into the knee and begin to launch forward, playing with your balance, playing with the weight. Think of the Libra scale. Your hands can rest on the block or on the earth. You can utilize that wall to help stabilize you if you don't have a prop. Start to rotate from your belly, pressing the right shoulder into the wall. Maybe extend the right arm. Gaze can be anywhere that feels good. Take one more breath in. Stay, breathe out. Hand to hip. Bend through your foundational leg and slowly begin to rise and release that. All right, you guys, last time, and then we'll get into our surrender portion. Walk away from the wall, taking your block with you if you'd like to use it. We'll face the side with our feet shoulder width distance apart. You're gonna rotate the left foot out. Now, option here, you can press through the sole of foot into the wall just like we did for warrior three, or you can keep it floating. Up to you if you're utilizing a block or a prop. It's gonna come underneath the shoulder, just outside of the pinky toe. Hand can stay at hip, maybe you tee one arm out. Start to bend into the front knee, playing with the balance. We'll start to hinge, releasing hand to block or to earth. Flexing the back toes, you're either actively pressing the foot back or it's actually pressing into the wall. Use your torso, the bottom obliques to rotate Maybe the arm reaches towards the sky. Maybe the palm reaches, or the bicep rather, reaches forward. Maybe you start to play with floating the left hand off of your prop. See what happens. One more breath in. Exhale, hand comes back to hip. Bend through the front knee. Lightly tap the left foot down and rise. Nice job, you guys. So we'll switch it out. Rotate the toes to point forward first. Toe heel the feet together, shorten your stance, and then we'll just take it in the opposite direction. So set up your block if you're going to use it. Get closer to the wall if you'd like to utilize that for the foot. Right toes point forward, left toes point off to the side. We'll start to bend through the front knee. You can keep hands on hips or maybe extend the right arm. Start to play with the balance. Think of the scale here as you put more weight here, you have less weight on the foot and then release the hand down. Maybe you extend the left arm. Maybe bicep comes next to the ear. If you want the quad stretch here, you can play with your candy cane. I'm sorry, I forgot to cue it on the other side, so if you're doing it on this side, maybe do it on the other. Squeezing your heel towards your bum, pressing the hips forward. Maybe start to play with lifting the hand off the prop. Hold for the breath in. Slowly release on the breath out. All right, you guys, really nice job. Rotate the toes to point forward. Shorten your stance. So we're going to come to a seat. And again, I, um, I'm gonna do the surrender series on the wall. So if you want your blanket, go ahead and grab that so it's handy for you. I'll show you how to utilize that once we get there, or your pillow, whatever you have. We're going to come to a seat with our hip pressing against the wall, and we're going to rotate to legs up the wall. So just come to a comfortable seat on the mat with the right hip or left hip either side, pressing up against the wall, and you're just going to rotate the legs up as you spin your back down. Now here you might have some space from your hips towards the wall. You can use your hands and the feet to lift the hips and walk your booty just a little bit closer towards the wall. And then start to extend the legs. You can flex the toes if you want a little bit more activation or just let your feet rest here, micro bending through the knees. 
Take the arms out to the side. If you would like to use a blanket here or your pillow, you can draw it underneath the head if that feels good. Or you can take the blanket on top of the hips for grounding. We're holding here for a couple rounds of breath. Close your eyes or soften your gaze. One more round of breath. Letting your body settle as you begin to prepare for your surrender. Finding that balance of effort and ease as we begin to soften. We'll rest our arms down by our sides and we're gonna take a bridge pose on the wall. You can stay right here and your legs up the wall if you'd like to a little bit longer. If you're moving into a bridge, start to bend the knees so the soles of the foot will press into the wall. You're gonna lead with the pelvis or lead with the hips. So we're going to move into a shoulder stand from our bridge pose. So think about creating that same type of shape in the body. So you're gonna press your feet into the wall, leading with the hips, we'll start to lift the hips up. And then maybe you walk your feet up on the wall so that your ankles are in line with the knees. Start to wiggle the shoulders underneath your body. If you'd like to interlace the hands, feel free to do so and press the pinkies down and the knuckles back towards the wall. Looking at your legs, notice if the knees are splaying open. Try to squeeze your inner thighs towards one another so the knees point up. If you'd like to stay in your bridge, feel free. Please, you guys, do not look around. So if you need to watch me first and then rewind the video to get back into it, please feel free. We're going to move into our legs up the wall from here. So you release the hands to the low back. Maybe walk your biceps even closer or your triceps rather closer towards one another. We can play with lifting one leg. I like to draw my knee a little bit closer towards my face first. And then lift the other leg. And then if it still feels good here in this pike position, you can start to bring your toes up towards the sky, coming into your shoulder stand. Gaze is straight up. Please avoid looking around. I will hold it here for another four rounds of breath if you had to pause and get back in so you have a little bit more time. Feel free to stay in legs up the wall or in your bridge. Gazing straight up at the toes. Find that pike shape in the body again to release. Please keep the hands on the low back. We'll start to bend one leg at a time and release the soles of the feet back to the wall. Coming through your bridge pose, if you're already there, we'll meeting you there. And then slowly release the hips all the way down. One more time coming into your legs up the wall. We'll take Baddha Konasana here, soles of the feet together, knees come out towards the side. You can release the hands to the knees, how I have them, or maybe release them over your head. If you need a little bit of assistance in this stretch, you can lightly place the hands on the inner thighs. Nothing too aggressive. Slight tuck of the chin. Your spine is pressing into the earth just as it was pressing into the wall at the start of your practice. Hands to outer thighs, close the legs like a book. Keep the right knee bent, extend the left leg up towards the sky. We're taking pigeon on the wall. You're gonna take the ankle to the top of the thigh and press your knee towards the wall. Flexing all 10 of the toes.
and then we'll switch that out when you are ready. And gently release. Both legs are back up the wall. Option, you guys, you can stay right here for the remainder of your practice and find your Shavasana with legs up the wall. It's a really nice place to stay. Or you can start to bend the knees, gently rolling to one side or the other, and slowly begin to press your body back up with as little effort as possible. And then make your way into a final resting pose Shavasana. So I'll meet you there. If you have any blocks or books and you'd like to place those underneath the knees, that will give you a little bit of support there. Your blanket, again, can come on top of the hips for grounding, on top of your body for a blanket, or underneath the head for a pillow. Just place it at the back of your mat. We'll slowly begin to recline down into our final rest. I will hold you here for just a minute or so. Now take your time to get yourself comfortable. Arms resting by your sides with the palms up. Eyelids are soft or your gaze is down. We'll start to final, settle into our final rest, whether that's still in your legs up the wall or in your Shavasana on your mat, supported by props or not. As you start to surrender, think about the balance. The ease and the effort of your practice today. How you can utilize the wall to deepen the stretch. Experience something different in the pose. about how you can take that balance off of your mat. How does it resonate with you, especially in this time? The pink moon is called pink because it symbolizes the flowers, the new growth of spring. It is a perfect time. Start to think about new growth in your life. Our lives have changed drastically within a week. What are the little things that you notice? Where you can find new growth, where you can find just a little bit more balance. Yogis, please feel free to stay here for as long as you need. Feel free to turn this video off if you would like to rest a little longer so you're not hearing my voice. Otherwise, begin to gently reawaken, wiggling fingers, maybe touch each finger pad to your thumb pad. Roll out your wrists. Wiggle your toes and roll out your ankles. We'll arrive 
arrive to a seat however is most comfortable to you. Maybe roll to one side or the other, or here I will just draw my knees in towards my chest and gently begin to lift myself up, keeping my eyes closed, setting the props to the side. I'll meet you in a nice, comfortable, easy seat with your palms resting down on the thighs. Imagine that you're still pressing your spine against that wall behind you. Even the back of your head is pressing into the wall. Your shoulders are soft and sliding down towards your hips. We'll seal our practice with one breath together. Take your right hand to your belly, your left hand to your heart. Exhale all the stale air. <sighs> Inhale. The divine feminine pieces of your practice. Counter that with an exhale of the masculine portion. Imagining the moon and the sun directly opposite one another. Take one more breath in. And an easy breath out. Keeping the length through the spine. Releasing your hands to your third eye. Thank you all so much for joining me virtually. It was an honor to guide you through your practice this afternoon. If you're looking for a little bit more, Marisol will host a live Zoom sound healing meditation honoring the full moon at 8 p.m. tonight. You can find the link right here on the Hapa Yoga Facebook page. Thank you all for being here. Hinging from my hips, bowing to you, bowing to yourself, sealing in your practice. Namaste, my friends. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed utilizing the wall for your balancing. It was so great to practice with you today. Um, I hope I see you again soon in person, but I will for sure see you here on Facebook for our virtual classes. Thanks you guys. Love you so much. See you soon.